This is Special Prosecutor Larry Clayman. I'm the only lawyer ever to obtain a court ruling that a president of the United States committed a crime. For truth, for competition. As a young lawyer, I helped break up AT&T. That's why you have all your cell phones today. For sovereignty, for the republic. I'm the guy who, at Judicial Watch, which I founded, uncovered the Chinagate scandal. Millions of dollars going to the Clinton campaign, corrupting our political system. For the privacy of citizens. And I'm the only guy to have enjoined the National Security Agency from mass surveillance on hundreds of millions of Americans. Tearing it up. I'm the son of meat packers in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I know how to slice and dice. Bringing it back. We're going to take this country apart and put it back together again in the way envisioned by our founding fathers. It's not just talk. We're not just regurgitating news stories. Larry Klayman, special prosecutor, is making the news. And now, here's Larry. Welcome to this week's edition of Special Prosecutor with Larry Klayman. A lot of things happening. We have national emergencies. We have quarantining from coast to coast. I saw a meme that came out earlier this week and said, if you think things are bad, just think about if you were quarantined with Rashida Tlaib. But it's not funny. It's very, very serious. And we've got politicians on both coasts whoring it up. You've got Andrew Cuomo in New York. You've got Gavin Newsom, the governor of California, two governors vying to lead the Democrat Party. And then you have the president who one minute says it's okay. Next minute, it looks like he's panicking, and every time he talks, the stock market goes down. I love the president, but he's got to be more consistent. He's got to do actions rather than words. And some of the words that he issued Friday morning in his daily briefing are extremely troubling. I want to play them for you now. Listen to them carefully. I want Al, our great producer, to play them twice because I want it to sink in because I want you to understand why it is that Freedom Watch and Larry Klayman And now 200 class action plaintiffs and growing are bringing a lawsuit against China to pay for this massive damage rather than have the American people pay for it, which will bankrupt us for decades, if not centuries to come and socialize this country, push us into virtually a communist gulag. And once you do that, there'll be no turning back. Once you do something like this, the vision of our founding fathers is gone. But now roll the tape. I want people to hear what the president said. He's got to sober up. And, and really think this through rather than just bloviate, you know, because it sounds good. Play it. I can speak for myself, but uh, I have a very good relationship with China and with President Xi. I have great respect for President Xi. I consider him to be a friend of mine. Uh, it's unfortunate that this got out of control. It came from China. It got out of control. Some people are upset. I know uh, I know President Xi. Uh, I, he loves China. He respects the United States. And I have to say, I respect China greatly, and I respect President Xi. Really, Uh, President? Play that again, Al. I want people to hear it a second time. I can speak for myself, but uh, I have a very good relationship with China and with President Xi. I have great respect for President Xi. I consider him to be a friend of mine. Uh, It's unfortunate that this got out of control. It came from China. It got out of control. Some people are upset. I know uh, I know President Xi. uh, He loves China. He respects the United States. And I have to say, I respect China greatly and I respect President Xi. You have to wonder what China may have on the president. I mean, you got to I mean, what else can you say now? Here's the thing. Why should the American people pay for this immense damage in the trillions of dollars? That's why I brought a class action lawsuit on behalf of the American people. We can seize the assets in this country if we get a jury verdict. And I'm confident that we can do that, particularly in Texas, which tends to be a conservative place, a conservative venue. I didn't bring it in New York City. I didn't bring it in Los Angeles, California. I didn't bring it in Boston, Massachusetts or Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I brought it in Texas, maybe the last bastion of real freedom in this country. Now, the president has to sober up here. He just can't say whatever comes to mind. And what's really important here is that we're not against the Chinese people. They're good people. They're being ruled upon by a communist dictatorship, a Politburo, that in all likelihood, and it's known and it's been reported in Wuhan, China, where this coronavirus began and where it spread, is the only bioweapons facility in China. And we know that China has bioweapons. Most major countries do. We do, too. It's, by the way, they're illegal under the Geneva and other 
international convention. So the theory of our case, and I want you to go to freedomwatchusa.org and review that complaint and sign up to become a class action plaintiff if you have damage, and I'm sure that you do, and we can verify that, and you can communicate with us because we're here for you, we're here for the American people, is that China needs to pay for this. And why isn't he saying that? Why isn't the president putting on large tariffs to pay for this? Why isn't he nationalizing Chinese assets that are in this country? Why is it that our intelligence agencies who spy on the American people, I got two preliminary injunctions against them four and five years ago under Obama, they have mass surveillance capabilities, satellite surveillance, they have email, they have text, they have internet, uh, everything, human resources on the ground by the CIA. Why wasn't the president informed of what happened in Wuhan, China? Why was it kept from him? Or did he know? And did he not say? We need answers to that. I have filed Freedom of Information Act requests. They come due this Monday. When the government does not respond, I can assure you they won't. Their derriere is going to be sued right up their wazoo, for lack of a better word, because our government is responsible as well, because they didn't tell us what was going on. There was no clarion call. There was no Paul Revere. There was zip. And this is a breakdown. It's why people have no confidence in government anymore. If the government is opening its mouth, I got to tell you, Larry Klayman has the impression that it's lying. What other thing do? What other result is there since the Vietnam War, when Johnson lied to us about the Gulf of Tonkin, resulted in fifty-five thousand American deaths and hundreds of thousands maimed? It's been worse and worse and worse. So yes, it's the government of China, and it's our own deep state and the intelligence agencies. And the president has to call a spade a spade. Now, I understand that he thinks we're dependent on China. China probably has threatened us and said, oh, we're going to cut off pharmaceuticals because now most of them are made in China, or we're going to pull our investments out of the United States. You know what? If I was president and someone made that threat to me, I would nationalize all their assets right here in the United States. So it's extremely important that we have to address this thing as we the people, peacefully and legally. We must do it. The government's not going to do it. We can be the president's friend. We can do what he won't do. I love the president in a personal sense. I can't endorse him as head of Freedom Watch, but I want to see him reelected, and I'll do whatever I can personally in that regard. I've been defending him for three years. I've been trying to talk to him for three years. I can't, probably because Roger Stone told him not to talk to me. And Roger Stone, we know, is now convicted of seven felony counts and will probably do time unless the president gives him a pardon. But this is the kind of thing that needs to be addressed by we the people. And then there's another aspect of this, and this is the media. And we're going to talk about this later with Ben Stein, who knows the media. He's not just an author. He's not just a Yale lawyer. He's not just a writer. He's not just a comedian. He's not just a financial expert. But why are, is the leftist media, particularly the cables, they look happier than ever. Even Fox News, notwithstanding CNN, the communist news network, or as Mark Levin says, MSLSD, MSNBC. You know, you turn it on, and there's this Chiron on Fox. Coronavirus, you know, dilemma, or whatever you want to call it. I mean, it's huge on the front thing, you know, catastrophe. And then you have on the right, like you used to have, or you see on billboards with the national debt, every time someone dies, they put it up there. They're trying to scare the hell out of you. It boosts their ratings. It boosts their dollars. They're making money hand over fist after everybody else in this country is sinking faster than a rock. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. And then, of course, Fox News doesn't even report our class action. The left reported it. Fox News didn't report it because years ago I had issues with Roger Ailes, which continues to this day because their lackey, his lackey, Suzanne Scott, who was put in power after he had to resign over all the sex scandals, is the protege of Ailes. She got her job, you know, basically to cover up, you know, for what went on over there because she was part of it. She was a facilitator of the sexual harassment. And this is the lack of honesty. You know, whether I hear Hannity or hear Tucker Carlson, I can't watch either of them anymore. I can't. I turn it off because all to them is boosting their ratings and advertising dollars. Tucker Carlson doesn't really have any views. I know I'm going back way when. Whoever he's with, he loves. When he was on CNN, he used to attack me for suing the Clintons on Crossfire. So we need some truth here. 
And that's why this radio show is so important. It's why you need to share it. It's why my daily podcasts are important. You can find them at freedomwatchusa.org. You can find it on Spotify, on iTunes, on Facebook, on Roku, on Amazon Fire, on Patreon. You need to get the word out because we, the American people, need to rise up. And there's another thing out there is that when things really hit the fan and we feel the full effects uh, on our economy and the crash in the stock market, you're going to have violence in the streets. You know, be prepared to protect yourself, okay, in self-defense, not offensively. But this country is going to explode. So we got to snap out of this, and we've got to really do this quietly, peacefully, calmly. We've got to take care of business. We've got to hold China accountable. And your Freedom Watch is doing just that for the American people. So I want you to go to freedomwatchusa.org. Contribute to our cause with tax-deductible contributions. I have to assemble a team of lawyers throughout this country. I hope to get volunteers. I hope people will contact me at leclayman, K-L-A-Y-M-A-N, at gmail.com. Join our cause. But some of them are going to have to pay, and it's going to be expensive. So please, support us financially as well as morally, and pray for you, pray for your loved ones, pray for the country, because there are a lot of people out there that are not doing a service to this country, namely the governor of California and the governor of New York, who are whoring it up for their own political benefit, thinking that they are the heir apparent to Joe Biden when he collapses physically or mentally before the election, as he probably will do. And I don't wish him any harm physically or otherwise. I really don't. But this guy's not capable of being president of the United States. He just doesn't have it. He's gone. He'll be doing coloring books before he's president of the United States. I'll be right back with the second segment of Special Prosecutor with Larry Klayman. Until then, go to freedomwatchusa.org, contribute to our cause, join our Justice League, sign up for the class action, and let's take legal matters into our own hands peacefully and legally. I'll be right back. Oh, special prosecutor, Very bad. Larry Clayman. If you'd like to support Freedom Watch and this radio show, go to freedomwatchusa.org. In addition to our class action lawsuit against China to make them pay, not we the people, not the taxpayers, go to freedomwatchusa.org. Read the columns that I've been writing, listening to our podcasts, share that with everybody. But we're also preparing a complaint as we speak against the governor of California, Gavin Newsom, someone who violated the law when, in fact, gay marriage was not legal. In fact, there was a proposition in California that said it was illegal. The people voted for that. Yet late yesterday, he issues an executive order claiming executive powers that he can force everybody to stay in their house and not move around. Now, why did he do that? He did that because he's vying for the leadership in the Democrat Party. You know, he's good looking. Some people think I think he looks like a pretty boy. Looks kind of weird to me. He's articulate. Surely he is articulate. He's phony. He's more phony even than Bill Clinton when you look at him. But he sees what Governor Andrew Cuomo is doing in New York. Cuomo is very articulate, comes off in a masculine way like he's in control. Gavin Newsom doesn't come off that way. And he is, in fact, competing with Andrew Cuomo because they know that Biden, Joe Biden, doesn't look well, doesn't act well mentally and physically. He's probably not even going to make it to the convention, the Democrat convention, assuming they have a convention given this coronavirus. They'll probably do it by teleconference. And he surely won't make it to the election. I mean, the guy's hanging by a thread. Last week when he had a debate with Bernie Sanders, Sanders, they had to inject him with adrenaline or something. Because he was fairly lucid. It was completely different than anything we've seen before. And, of course, you can raise that kind of energy with something that's injected. I hope there is an investigation of that because people need to know. But this is what's happening. And both Newsom and Cuomo, I think, believe that they have a good chance of being inserted into the presidential 
uh, equation and become the nominee of the Democrat Party. Layer that with the fact that what they're suggesting is going to result in not just a socialization of this country, but it's going to edge very close to communism. And the president is helping that out with this huge bailout. Rather than having China pay, he's going to have the American people bail it out. We're going to be in debt. You think the tens of trillions of dollars we're in debt now is terrible? Well, when this thing's over, it's probably going to go up to $40, $50 trillion. I mean, we're handing out paychecks to everybody without cause. Uh, we are bailing out major industries. Some people are suggesting on the left, like Bernie Sanders, that we nationalize industries. Sound like Venezuela? Sound like Cuba? Sound like the Soviet Union? I mean, even Russia is not that far out to the left currently. And once, of course, you know, you put into effect this kind of socialization, if not communization of the country, it's very difficult to turn it back completely because people become dependent on the welfare, much like they become dependent on drugs, you know, hard drugs and pharmaceutical drugs. The vision of our founding fathers is going to be destroyed, not just capitalism, but our liberties, liberties and freedoms are going to be lost. And the left knows that. And they're using this as an opportunity to take total control of this country. Why do you think that the Muslim congresswoman, the anti-Semite, the Jew-hating Ilham Omar, has been praising President Trump when he's been a friend of Israel? Because she's happy that he's actually now on, in her camp. So, look, I love the president. As I said, in a personal way, you know, I want him to be reelected. He's the best we've got. But, man, he's got to snap out of it. It's kind of like Cher in the, in the movie Moonstruck. She hits uh, her lover and says, snap out of it. You know, you don't really love me. Well, you're, you know, I know that the president loves this country, but he's got to really sober up here. And, and the answer is not to buy an election with goodies to be handed out to the American people. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to buy the election, and that's going to ruin this country. So we need to talk up. We need to be candid. You know, people are afraid to confront him because the poor guy's been so much, and we're happy that he survived. But I think he's kind of lost it in this regard. And what we need to do, we the people, we need to rise up. We need to get the damages from China. We can seize their assets here. We can do what he can't do and won't do politically. And he's obviously being threatened by China. That's why the praise uh, last Friday with regard to President Xi, I mean, that was theater of the absurd. So that's the message, is that your Freedom Watch is fighting for you. You need to join our cause. Go to freedomwatchusa.org, sign up for our class action, contribute financially with tax-deductible contributions. I know I'm pumping that, but we really do need those contributions. We don't have the luxury of Judicial Watch, the group that I founded, who has about $120 million in assets right now. We need the help. So go to freedomwatchusa.org, and I'll be right back with our next segment with our great guest, Ben Stein. that make corrupt politicians make wee-wee in their little pants. Transparency and the rule of law will be the touchstones of this president. But we have to pass the bill so that you can uh, find out what is in it. Special Prosecutor Larry Klayman. Be the one who makes our country great again. Go to FreedomWatchUSA.org and donate. I'm back with my very good friend, an American icon, a great writer, a great comedian, a great financial expert, and of course, a great actor, a Yale lawyer, I might add, on top of that. Yes, so Ben's got it all. And I want to introduce you again to my friend Ben Stein. And I want to get his take on what's happening in this country dynamically in terms of finances, in terms of the order that was just issued by Governor Gavin Newsom, if you can call it an order. I don't think it's of any legal force and effect. I researched it this morning. But Ben, I want to get your take on it. I don't want to take up too much time with the introduction because you are such an expert on these matters. Mm -hmm. Well, I shall do my best to ask what you want to ask first. Well, I want to see what your take is on the finances of the, of the country, well, the fact the stock terrible. market's crashing. It's going to be just terrible. It's just going to be just terrible. There's going to be, uh, there's going to be a, I think, a depression, not just a recession, but a depression. I think... Uh, if you're mandating that people be out of work, people are going to be out of work. If you're mandating that businesses close, then people will be laid off. If you're mandating that people not show up, 
uh, at work, excuse me, then there, there's going to be very high unemployment. I mean, just in the restaurant industry alone, one out of every 10 Americans works in the restaurant industry. They're, they're, they're gone. And uh, that by itself is going to cause a huge leap in unemployment. And uh, a huge number of Americans work in travel, and that's going to cause a huge leap in unemployment. And uh, the question is, is, it, is this necessary? Now, this the disease is a very a contagious disease, apparently. And I'm not a doctor, and I don't know whether it's true or not, but they say, Dr. Fauci says it's a very, very contagious disease, and I believe him. But the, uh, but the, the fatalities from this disease so far have been extremely modest. I mean, anyone is a, a, a loss and a sadness, but the, the, uh, the fatalities from this disease have been very small. So uh, we don't really uh, face uh, something like the Black Death, thank God, where uh, everybody was dying. Uh, we have had, we've had uh, about 100, roughly 150 fatalities, very roughly, very roughly between that and 200 fatalities, and that's too many. But uh, this is a country of 340 million people, and uh, when we had the swine flu, we had something like 12,000 to 15,000 fatalities, and nobody said a word about it. I mean, there was no uh, closing of restaurants. There was no closing of uh, airports, I mean, of airlines. There was, uh, we just didn't take it that seriously at all, and maybe we should have, but we didn't. So why are we taking this one so incredibly seriously and causing nationwide panic about it? I mean, and and I, and then to go to my home state of California, and as I look at the like city hall in Beverly Hills, so I'm right in the heart of Beverly Hills. Why are we taking this so very seriously when we haven't had that many fatalities in California, especially in Beverly Hills? I mean, we have not many more fatalities from smoking. Many, 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 many more fatalities of smoking than we do from the virus. So why don't we say to people, we can't smoke anymore either while we're about it, and we're going to go up and down the street in police cars arresting people who have uh, cigarettes in the car or are on their way to buy cigarettes. I mean, what, what, why are we taking this particular cause of death so incredibly seriously when there are so many other causes of death that we don't take particularly seriously. So, and, and this panic is what's going to really affect the economy. It's already knocked more than a third off the stock market, which is a very, very large sum and extremely meaningful to people preparing for retirement, extremely meaningful. So, uh, and I'm one of them, so that's extremely meaningful to me. So uh, it, it's, it's bad all around and, Maybe it's true that this is the only way to find it. Maybe that's true. That may well be true. Uh, but I think we'd like to see some more evidence. Yeah, our governor, uh, pretty boy, Mr. Newsom, uh, he, he's a handsome guy, a dashing guy, and thin and well-dressed. Uh, but I'd like to know uh, where where does he get the authority to do this? I, I, I understand he can declare a state of emergency, but from the wording of the law, it seems to me it's usually prepared, uh, reserved for wartime. And I wouldn't call this wartime by a long, long way. I mean, it's not wartime when you have uh, roughly two, roughly between 150 and 200 deaths out of a population of roughly 40 million. So I just don't get quite what's going on here, it's, it's, except that the government is whipping us up into a state of panic and fear and uh, – I don't know why, quite why we're doing it. I mean, I, well, I, I it seems to we... me that uh, Governor Newsom is competing with the governor of New York, Andrew Cuomo. You know, you've got the left coast and the east coast competing here because I think they perceive that Joe Biden's going to falter either physically or otherwise, and he may not be the nominee of the Democratic Party. They're vying for that. These are auditions. And when Cuomo comes on, and he's very well spoken, no question about that, despite his unsavory associations in past. And kind of Newsom, appearance. I might that add, is that it's very appealing to the American people that these people are claiming control. And of course, if you're a leftist, you love that control. You want government control. You want to squeeze everything out of public life or private life except the government. That's what socialist communists believe. And when we go this route, there's going to be no turning back in many ways, which leads me to the second thing I want to ask you about. Uh, actually, before we do that, I took a look at Gavin Newsom's order. It really applies under the law only to government agencies. He can only assume total control over the function of government agencies of which he's sitting on top of, not we the people. So I wonder whether 
in California, he shouldn't order an emergency proposition to let the people vote on whether they want him to behave this way. Because well, I don't that's think a most very good people idea. Or at least it seems we have hearings. I mean, as far as I know, and I live here and I check the news every day, many times a day. There's, uh, there's, there have been no public hearings about this. I mean, here, here we have probably the most drastic thing that's ever happened in California law, and it's being done without any public hearings about it. So that we, as you, as you put it so well, we the people have no input into it. I mean, do, do we the people really want to have a uh, situation where the police cars are going up and down the street looking at people. I mean, I've lived here at Beverly Hills now for a very long time, and I've never seen anything quite like it where we have police cars zooming up and down the street looking at uh, cruising up and down the street looking at people as they're out on the street. Well, that's well, remember scary. also, Ben, with regard to Gavin Newsom, when he was mayor of San Francisco, he violated California law by handing out marriage licenses to gay people and lesbians. It was against the law. Proposition 8 made it against the law. And it wasn't even the law to begin with, notwithstanding Proposition 8. He doesn't care about the law. He cares about promoting himself, you see. And that's what's scary because they've gone too far. And they've gone too far. And, you know, it's for political purposes. But I want to shift into another area. I want to know why, Ben, the American people should have to pay for this bailout. With everyone getting a check for $1,000, maybe $1,500 if you've got a kid, uh, emptying out the treasury to the point where we're not going to even be more bankrupt today, but our kids and grandkids are going to be living in poverty, walking around with tin cups, hoping that maybe somebody will give them something. I mean, why don't the Chinese pay for this? And I brought a class action lawsuit this week against China for that. I already have 200 people signing up on our website at freedomwatchusa.org. Why did the Chinese have to pay for it? And then I'm listening to the president this morning. I don't know, you know, what I know he doesn't drink and I commend him for that, but I wonder what he was on because he starts praising President Z of China. He's a great friend. China means well, but I don't mean well. This was most likely an accidental leak or otherwise from a bioweapons facility in Wuhan, China. And that's illegal under international conventions, and they have no immunity from suit. We brought a lawsuit, and they should have to pay. Not us. We shouldn't have to pay for this. What do you think? I don't think you're going to get very far with your lawsuit, but I think it's a brilliant idea. But God bless you. I can't, I can't imagine the Chinese people writing a check for $31 billion or $31 trillion, whatever they're asking them for, back to the basis of the situation. We've got a virus floating around. It's a dangerous virus. It causes death in something like 1% of the people who get it, mostly quite elderly. And I'm fairly elderly, so I feel the pain. Um, two, uh, this virus has spread to only a very small number of people and uh, relative to the population of this country. Why are we so hysterical about this? Three, the government is not just creating panic. It is going to create a great depression. I mean, when I was a child, uh, all through my life, my father was a very famous economist who had come of age as an economist during the Great Depression. And I used to always ask him, Pop, can we have another Great Depression? He would always say, no, there are too many government safeguards in place to prevent another Great Depression. But he was not banking on the fact that the government could actually purposely create a Great Depression. Now, I think I think we're going to have another Great Depression, and then you're going to really see the government running wild, because then the, many, right. many people are going to be utterly dependent upon the government, and they're going to have to bow down and worship the government. Well, you know, Ben, I want to say one thing in terms of collecting any judgment. Of course, we hope we have a judge that will let this go to a, tr- a jury in Dallas, Texas. But Chinese have their assets here. We don't have to ask them to write a check. They can be attached. Okay, they can be seized great. in the United great. States. Well, that's great. I didn't know that. And, and more power to you for knowing that. God bless you, sir. I think that's fabulous. Uh, yeah. Well, I hope you get to hope you get to this. But in the meantime, I want to know why it is that it's perfectly illegal for me to go out and just cruise around and go visit my friends. And I think they're a misdemeanor with subject to punishment over, of six months in prison for just going to visit a friend. When, it, when it's not illegal to go buy cigarettes, which are far more lethal than going to visit a friend. Well, and why it is, well, well wait, let me just, just finish for just one second. Yeah, why, sure. why, it is, why it is that uh, p- 
people. I, I, I have working for me a nurse because I have a broken knee or a very badly injured knee. And uh, he's also a pastor of a Christian church. And he says uh, his, his congregants are not going to be able to come on Sunday to worship at his church. Now, it seems to me this is an unconstitutional violation of freedom of worship. And nobody's man- even mentioned a word about that. And uh, our synagogue is closed for services tonight. And that it seems to me is an unconstitutional abridgment of freedom of worship. And I'm not quite sure uh, why it is that for a virus that kills something like one hundredth or maybe one thousandth of the people that uh, are, well, about one five hundredth of the number of people that the, that the swine flu killed. Why are we doing this? Well, Ben, you know, the governor, if you look at his order, OK, he knows he can't enforce it. So he says we're not going to send anybody out to enforce it. He knows it's illegal under California's Constitution and otherwise. I mean, it's overreaching. Well, I, 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 there may be nobody out there to enforce it, uh, Larry, but there are police cars going up and down these very beautiful streets of Beverly Hills. And that's a frightening sight. Well, I'm sure it is. And, of course, that's why we have people like you, Ben, to tell the truth to the people. We have about two minutes left. Tell us what you've been doing lately. You have some books out there people should well, read. Well, I have, I, I'm writing a book about Richard Nixon, who is still think, the greatest president of the 20th century and a peacemaker. I think he would have handled this in a much more restrained way. Um, I'm writing a book, uh, I'm writing a series of essays for a magazine called Newsmax, which is a very wonderful magazine, and also for my beloved American Spectator that I've been writing for for close to 50 years, and uh, and uh, and I, I keep my wife company, my wife is an invalid, and I keep her company, and uh, we're very blessed in that we have many houses in the Los Angeles area, so... so I can follow the government's illegal order to the letter and only be in my house and still be in lots of different pretty spots. But I'm I'm just uh, worried about the government going uh, flat out against what seems to me against the law and against common sense. And I want to know why the media is allowed to whip up this frenzy over a very, very small number of fatalities. Uh, and not only that, Ben, I mean, we have Fox News, not to mention MSNBC, or as Mark Levin oh, well, says, MSLSD, or CNN, the Communist oh, News funny. Network. We have Fox News gloating over this thing. Everybody's smiling. They're happy. They're making money hand over fist. You got a Chiron, you know, coronavirus crisis on this. They're doing real well. And and they're contributing to that. They even have a, a thing like the national debt where you show someone when they die, it comes up on the right-hand side of the screen. I, mean, it's I know. They control. have a death meter. Growth meter, and it's about, I think, a very morbid way of handling things. And we haven't even talked about the stock market except for a brief moment. Well, we're going to have to wrap at this point. We're going to have you back again, Ben. Stay safe, okay? And say hello to Alex for me and the family. God bless you. Before he was a trial lawyer, he sliced him and diced him. People used to ask me, Larry, what caused you to start Judicial Watch and now Freedom Watch, given the powerful forces in this country that put you at risk? In a meat packing plant. I'm the son of meat packers in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I know how to slice and dice. A very special prosecutor, Larry Clayman. If you'd like to support Freedom Watch and this radio show, go to freedomwatchusa.org. Now the verdict, fellow patriots, fellow Americans fellow people that have courage, people that don't just talk, but people who act through your Freedom Watch, through me, through others, through people around the country. We need to mobilize. We are a citizen's army. We are the superheroes. You are the superheroes. We need now to defend this country because we can no longer trust our government. They did not inform President Trump, the deep state, in the intelligence agencies of what was going on in China. We have these foreign enemies, China, Iran, Russia, Venezuela, North Korea. They're looking at what is going on right now. We're on our knees. We cannot afford to empty out our treasury because the president wants to buy the next election. I'm sorry, president, that's what you're doing, because this is contrary to your view on capitalism, on liberty and freedom. China should have to pay for this. Since the government's not going to do it, we have an attorney general, Bill Barr, 
who's no better than the prior one, Jeff Sessions or any others under Clinton or Obama, he's figuratively speaking, hiding under his desk with a gas mask. Now, where is he? Didn't want to indict James Comey. Didn't want to indict Andrew McCabe. Didn't want to indict the Lovebirds, struck in page. Didn't want to indict the Obamas, the Clintons, the Bidens. Biden's massive bribery from Ukraine. Nothing. Part of the Washington establishment. Hey, why make waves for myself? I don't want to get impeached. I don't want to be thrown out. I want to be part of the club. I want to go to the parties in Georgetown. I'm sorry. We don't have time to party. We have to get up and we have to act. And our government clearly is not doing it for us. And then you've got the media, as I've said out there, whether it's CNN, Communist News Network, MSNBC, MSLSD. You know, they used to have a a saying that was lean forward. I used to say it's more, it's closer to bend over, you know, with MSNBC. And then, of course, you've got Fox News, which, you know, has a, a thing on their, whatever you call it, you know, on the screen at all times of people dying, you know, you know, one more dead, you know, more people injured, more people infected. It's unbelievable. They're making money hand over fist and they're scaring the hell out of the American people to the point that it's almost a panic mode and they're doing it not just for fun, they're doing it for profit. You know, when I look at some of the commentators, they got smiles on their faces. They know their jobs are secure. Yours aren't secure. You may lose your job. You may lose your home. You may lose everything here. Plus, we're going to be bankrupt for our kids and grandkids. So that's why you need to support, and we try to do it peacefully and legally, our class action. Join it. If you go to our website at freedomwatchusa.org, you can sign up. You can explain what your damage is. Give us your contact information. You'll get our free newsletters. We'll keep in touch with you. But we need to enlist in this citizen's army. We need to fight against this scourge of coronavirus. And we need to have the Chinese pay for it. And as I've said, because I don't want to whip up anything against the Chinese people. They're good people, particularly Chinese Americans who come here. They work hard. They help build the railroads. They've done a lot of other things here to help this country. It's about the communist Chinese leadership, the Politburo in China. And the president should not be praising the president of China, bragging that he's his great friend. He's not your great friend. This great friend is sticking it up your rear end and sticking it up the rear end of the American people. So please go to freedomwatchusa.org. Read that class action complaint carefully. It's well documented. This virus in all likelihood leaked from a Chinese bioweapons facility. It's illegal under international law and the conventions which China has signed. They have no legal immunity. They can be sued. We ask for a jury trial. And when we get a judgment, we can seize their assets. They have billions, if not trillions of dollars in American banks, in American investments. They bring their money here because it, it, before today, before what's happened with coronavirus, we had a stable economy. But it's not stable anymore. They're pro their assets should be nationalized and frozen by the president right now so it can pay for the great damage. I'm going to be back next week with another special edition, a special prosecutor with Larry Klayman. I want you to listen to my podcast every day because they give you an update and you can find them at freedomwatchusa.org, on iTunes, on Spotify, on Facebook, on Patreon, on Roku and Amazon Fire. Because just like in the days leading up to the revolution, we have to give the clarion call to the American people that we need to do it for ourselves because our government is not going to do it for us. God bless you. God bless your family. Stay safe. God bless America and God save America. And I'll be back next week with another edition of Special Prosecutor with Larry Clayman. Thank you for listening to me. 